I greet you, ladies and gentlemen, even at this time. I'd like to take this opportunity to present some important information. Um, today, I'm going to make a presentation on private saving, national saving, and uh, the current account. I'm also going to make a presentation on the concept of national debt. So straight away, I'll go to my screen. So we are going to start by looking at private saving, public saving, and national saving. So in our exposition, we start with the concept of a closed economy, which is either experiencing a public deficit or public surplus. In this simple economic model, with a closed economy, there are three uses for national income or GDP, which is produced within a given financial year. If Y is national income or GDP, then the three uses of national income or GDP are household consumption expenditure, investment spending by private sector firms, and government expenditure, obviously by the government and its related institutions. This implies that our national income is equal to C plus I plus G, what is known as the national income identity. National saving can then be thought of as the amount or the residue that is remaining of national income that is not consumed or spent by government. In a simple model of a closed economy, anything that is not spent is assumed to be invested. So if we make investment in the subject of the formula, it means C and G, they cross the equal sign to the left hand side and the resultant uh, situation is that we have got y minus c minus g being equal to investment so national saving can be split or splined into private saving and public saving denoting t for taxes paid by consumers that go directly to the government. And TR by, for transfers that the government pays to the consumers leads to the following exposition. National serving can be split into private serving and public serving, where we have got a um, uh, the private saving being Y minus T, which is our disposable income, plus TR, which are transfers, which adds to disposable income, minus consumption, household consumption expenditure. So the first part, the private saving. The first part is private saving. As you can see, Y minus T, we have dealt with Y minus T in our previous set of lectures. And we explained that Y minus T, generically speaking, uh, it is disposable income. But in a more robust sense, we know that disposable, disposable income has got transfer uh, payments or transfers which augment it, which are received from the government through its various transactions. 
if we remove from disposable income, household consumption expenditure remain with private saving. And then if we add this to the saving of government, obviously the saving of government is tax revenue minus government spending, minus these transfers that we're talking about, that they augment uh, personal, I mean household uh, disposable income. So it's now minus uh, transfers. It's T minus G, that's the generic definition of the government budget position. The government budget position is tax revenue minus government expenditure because government spending is financed by tax revenue. And then we also subtract the transfers that are given to some economic agents to boost the aggregate demand or aggregate expenditure. So public saving, also known as the budget surplus or and or deficit is the term T minus T minus TR, which is government revenue through taxes or tax revenue minus government expenditures on goods and services minus transfers. That is those monies that are given to economic agents without any corresponding economic activity, economic activities to boost aggregate demand in an economy. So from the equation stated in the first bullet, we gather that uh, the sum of private serving and public serving equals investment in a simple economy. The interest rate plays an important role in bringing about equilibrium between the savings part of the economy and the investment part of the economy, according to neoclassical economics. We expect savings to incentivize, to be incentivized by interest rates, hence a positive relationship between savings and the interest rate. Whilst we expect an inverse relationship between fiscal investment and the, the interest rates, because interest rates would be serving as the opportunity cost of um, financial capital, which intermediates the creation of physical capital. So in an open economy with balanced public spending, in an open economy model, international trade is introduced. That's the current account is split into exports and imports. So our net exports, it's just the difference between proceeds from exports, which is the commodities that we sell in other countries, minus the commodities that we buy from other countries in terms of uh, obviously the, the financial flaws that are associated with the two macroeconomic ind indicators. The net exports is the, that part of GDP which is not consumed by domestic demand. In other words, it has to do with the international trend. So the, this part, which doesn't have anything to do with domestic demand, has to be subtracted from that aspect, which has to do with domestic demand. Domestic demand or uh, domestic absorption is C plus I plus G, according to our closed economy model, which has to be subtracted from GDP or national income for us to figure out our net exports. This implies that uh, if we transform the identity for net exports uh, by subtracting consumption investment and government spending, we get the national income accounting identity, the well-known national income accounting identity for an open economy, which is simply C plus I plus G plus NX, but if we take the domestic part, which is C plus I plus G2, the left-hand side, we've got Y minus uh, open bracket C plus I plus G, which is what we see uh, in that equation, uh, which is under the second bullet, being our net exports. The national survey is the part of national income which is not consumed or spent by the government. So Y minus C minus G 
gives us the national self. And this national saving simply capital letter I, which is investment plus net exports, because this national saving um, it has a component. The national saving in the state state has to be equal to investment plus uh, net ex net exports. In other words, we are saying this na national saving is the one which finances investment expenditure and the demand for commodities which are not produced in the domestic economy which is exports minus imports. Therefore, the difference between national saving and investment is equal to net exports. So if we say S minus I, it should be equal to X minus M in the steady state. Where S is savings that finance investment, so it's savings minus investment spending, which is equal to X minus M. So whatever finances the other is such that the one item or element which is being financed is separated from what is financing it. That's the logic. So the government budget can be directly introduced into this model. We consider now an open economic model with budget deficits and surpluses. Therefore, our budget is split into revenues, which are taxes, obviously. We know some revenues, they may come from non-taxation, like money is borrowed from other countries, or grants and other financial arrangements that are obtained mostly from offshore sources. And the spending, which are transfers and government spending. Revenue minus spending results in the public governmental saving. So the saving of government is simply tax revenue minus government expenditure minus the transfers that are given to the private sector partners, the economy to incentivize aggregate expenditure or aggregate demand. So the concept of disposable income of the households is the income minus the taxes plus net transfers, which is what we've already found. So our disposable income can only be used for saving or consumption. So this explicitly would imply that YT, our disposable income, is equal to consumption plus private saving. Where the subscript P denotes the private sector or private sector players in an economy. Therefore, private saving in this, in this model equals the disposable income of the household minus consumption. So if we make SP the subject of the formula, we get SP is equal to yt minus c. By this equation, the private saving can be written as y minus t, which is disposable income, plus uh, transfers, which is still augmenting disposable income, minus consumption, which gives us a private saving because we deducted household consumption expenditure. And the national account can be stated as follows. National income is thus equal to private saving plus consumption plus tax revenue minus uh, transfers. And if this equation is cast in the mold of y is equal to c plus i plus g plus net exports or x minus m, then we obtain C plus I plus G plus X minus M, which is on the right-hand side of the preceding equation, must be equal to what we got earlier, which is SP plus C plus T minus TR, 
which is this part, because y is equal to y. This y, this y is equal to that y. So another way of explaining this equation is just to, to substitute this y in this equation and we'll get that. So by one transformation, we get the determination of net exports and investment by private and public sector. So we know that our national savings simply equal to private saving plus the saving of government, which is collectively equal to investment expenditure plus our net exports. So by another transformation, we can make net exports the subject of the formula by taking uh, I to the other side and grouping like terms together. So we know that um, investment is primarily facilitated by the private sector. So we'd be having private saving minus investment plus the saving of government. This, that sum should be equal to our net exports. So this corresponds to the balances mechanics as developed by Wolfgang Stutzel or Stutzel. And uh, this exposition is based on the work, the seminal work on sectoral balances of the economy, which was developed by Wayne Goodley. So I hope that this a brief exposition about private saving, public saving, and national saving, and how these dovetail with the, our understanding of uh, the finances of a country and how uh, flows like investment and net exports, net, net exports take place will enhance your understanding for public finance related issues. In our next lecture, we're going to look at fiscal deficits, public debt, and the current account. I hope you benefited from this lecture. Have a good morning.